In this video, we'll be looking at a one sample right tailed Z test. So, uh, at this point, this should be an exercise. If you've been following along with my videos so far, you should be able to do this problem on your own. So, let's take a quick look at it. And here's the um, question or the situation. A study was performed to test if workers in a steel mill had job-related stress. So a random sample of 29 casting workers were measured and found to have a mean post-work resting heart rate of 78.3 beats per minute. Assume that the resting heart rate of all adults are distributed normally with mean 72 beats per minute and a standard deviation 11.2 beats per minute. Uh, at a significance level of 5%, is there enough evidence to conclude that these workers have a higher resting heart rate than the general population. So here in just a minute, I'm going to work this out using both the critical value method and the p-value method. And uh, in the meantime, what I'd like you to do is, is pause the video here in just a second and then try to work this out on your own. It's going to be important that you start trying some of these problems on your own and then come back and check your work. So see if you can do that now. Press pause. Okay, well you're back. Uh, hopefully you have actually tried this yourself and let's go on and see what we do. First thing, we have to decide what kind of test is needed. And if we have all of the appropriate um, uh, conditions met. So, uh, as I said before, this is going to be a one sample right tailed Z test. And why is that appropriate? Well, Ines needs to re meet these conditions for us to use this kind of a test. First of all, we, may, we need to be making a test concerning means. And, and we're testing for a greater mean in a single sample than in a hypothesized population. It's going to be right tailed because we're looking strictly for a greater or higher mean in the sample than in the population, which is basically our alternative hypothesis. The distribution of individuals is normal in this particular case, and so the distribution of sample means is also normal. Although with the sample size of 29, uh, unless it was, uh, you know, uh, pretty highly skewed and lots of or bimodal or lots of uh, outliers or something. Uh, 29 is pretty close to sample size that would work even if it wasn't quite so normal. But with the individuals normal, uh, the sample size doesn't really come into play. And in this case, we're told the population standard deviation is known. So those are conditions are enough to say that we can use a Z test. Now let's look what we have so far. If you parse out this and, and put the uh, the numbers that are in the uh, paragraph there and look at what they put the standard letters to them we see the n the sample size is 29 sigma sub x the standard deviation of all the individuals in the population is assumed to be 11.2 uh, x bar uh, our sample mean is 78.3 uh, alpha is 0 0.05 and then the null hypothesis is uh, H naught, that the population mean is 72 that we're drawing these from, that these are just like any other people in the, in the population, and so that the mean should be 72. The alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than 72. Now, um, I have seen some people list the, the null hypothesis with the less than or equal to there to make it exactly the complement of the alternative hypothesis, but the truth of the matter is we are assuming for the test that the mu is exactly 72 when we do our distribution of, of sample means. And uh, that's the distribution that we're making our assumptions based on. So we are assuming that the distribution of sample means is normal with a mean of 72. Now we can figure out the standard deviation of the X bars, sometimes called the standard error, and that's the standard deviation of the individual X's divided by square root of N, so that's 11.2 divided by square root of 29, and you can see I figured that out here on my calculator and stored that value as S, so I don't have to type these digits in again when I need it, I can just call it S. Uh, I even stored the hypothesized mean of 72 as M, uh, which is for mu, or mu or mu naught. Now, we also can figure out our Z star, which is our uh, test statistic, our standardized test statistic. And so that is a Z score. So it, it's the Z score of the X bar uh, in the distribution of X bars, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. So it's always X bar minus mu naught divided by this, this uh, sigma of the X bars, that is sigma of X over square root of N. Now I've already got this stored as S, 
and I've got the mu naught stored as m, so all I have to do in the calculator is parentheses 78.3 minus m, uh, close parentheses divide by s, and I stored that test statistic as z. So again, if I need to do anything else with it, and I need z, uh, z star, I'll just call up z in my calculator. Now at this point we have two choices. We can use the critical value method or the p-value method. If your teacher or your uh, particular problem asked you for one particular method, you can use that method or you can use both um, or just, just your choice if you have a choice. I personally kind of prefer the p-value method and encourage you actually to use that when given a choice. Uh, but if, again, over here on the left are the things we know. N is 29, sigma of X is 11.2, X bar is 78.3, alpha is 0.05, H naught is mu is equal to 72. Uh, a, the alternative hypothesis is mu greater than 72, so it's a right-tailed test. The sigma of the X bars is 2.079 something, and I have that stored as S. I have 72 stored as M. I have this Z star test statistic, which we just figured out, stored as Z. Okay, so the critical value method is just, since this is a right-tailed test, the entire critical value of a critical um, area or probability, which is alpha, is all in the right side. So that means there is 1 minus alpha to the left of it, so the critical value then is just inverse norm of 1 minus alpha. Uh, so that would be inverse norm, since this is a standard normal, we standardize it, that's just inverse norm of 0 0.9501. On the calculator, you can even leave out the 01. And that turns out to be 1.64485 to the limits of the calculator. Of course, we can probably, in practice, we can round this off a little bit more. Now, uh, so here, the, the Z, which I rounded off to a couple decimal places here, 3.03, .03, is clearly greater than the critical value of 1.64, so it's to the right of it, it will be in that critical region. So since Z star is greater than the critical value and we're doing a right-tailed test, that's enough to say that we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Now remember, the alternative way is the p-value way, and that is to find the, uh, the p-value. The p-value is the probability of getting a sample statistic, a Z star value, from a sample um, at random that's either this far or further out, in this case further to the right, um, if it really came from that null hypothesis. So in this case the P is the normal CDF then from basically from the Z star to infinity, but if you're using a standard normal we've seen before that we can use 10 instead of infinity and it, it's not going to affect the calculations as many digits as the calculator will show. So it's just normal CDF from Z star up to 10 from 0 to 1, and that turns out to give us a p-value of 0.00122626265, or approximately 0 0.001. And uh, notice that that is definitely less than 0 0.05. The p is less than alpha. When p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So again, if you're doing the p-value method, you're comparing p to alpha, and the critical value method you're comparing a Z star to your critical value. And here's the illustration. It's a one-tailed test, so notice both the p-value and the alpha value are areas on the right. The, uh, this this p-value, uh, the critical value one is the red area, and the red area is, is 0 0.05 or 5%, 95% unshaded, 5% shaded. The boundary here is about 1.64, you can see on the graph, or, or about 1.645. That is the critical value, whoops, go back. That is the critical value here that's the boundary of the critical region. So the red region is the critical region and the, the classical um, uh, critical value uh, uh, method is we look at Z star, which is right here, 3.029. And on this graph, that, that's way out here somewhere, about here. And we see it's most definitely in the red critical region, so we reject the null hypothesis. And in this case here, the p-value way you could illustrate that is, this is still the same curve, which is, see, since we're standardizing everything, this is a standard normal curve. And the p-value is, you just take your z star value, and that's the boundary of your region. Uh, it's kind of hard to see it because it's so small here, but it's shaded blue, and that is 0 0.0012. 
and what you're comparing is the size of the blue region to the size of the red region that is comparing P to alpha. When P is less than alpha it is significant and we uh, reject the null hypothesis. So what's happening here is notice that the we got a sample mean that was bigger than what we were expecting if it was just from a, a normal hypo, normal population and that dissonance is so far out there that is much more likely that this came from a uh, from a different population there's something different about this particular group of workers than the general population is and and in fact the probability that we would that that you would get if the general if the 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 it was really true that they were just like everybody else the probability that you would get such a sample or something with a larger with that mean or a larger mean uh, at random would only be 0 0.0012 that's such a minuscule probability that that could happen that we think it's much more likely much much more likely that um, there's something different about this population and so that leads us to our final conclusion is and we can state it this way. Notice when you state this, you need a sentence or two with this. So uh, you might want this whole paragraph here. The mean resting heart rate of the casting workers after work is 78.3 beats per minute, which is larger than the average resting heart rate of all adults, 72 beats per minute. With the p-value of 0.0012, this difference is statistically significant at the alpha equals 5% level. In fact, with this low a p-value, there is strong evidence to suggest that casting workers have a higher resting heart rate than the general population. And if a uh, higher heart rate then is, uh, is then correlated with, with uh, work-related work stress, then you can probably conclude that these steel workers are having some job-related stress, which is what we're trying to prove.